Hello everybody, this is my eighth and final video in my flipped class. It's more than just the third conditional. I want to go over some past information. First, general rules about all conditions. We have the zero, the first, the second, and the third. The first two could use when or if. The second two cannot use when because the when implies it's real. And in hypothetical inf situations, we cannot imply or say when. The zero and the first condition are real situations. The second and the third condition are hypothetical situations. The zero condition is talking about what always happens. It's in the simple present. And the first and second are both in now and the future. One is real, one is hypothetical. And the last one is the past. The third condition is only the past. As you can see, we have a full spectrum and a whole section of spoken English here. One rule about all the conditions is that we, when we use the zero condition, we are stating facts. We're talking about what's, what happens naturally in nature. In the first condition, we talk about consequences, what will happen. In the ten, uh, sorry, the second condition, we're talking about hypothetical possibilities or something that probably won't happen. And last, the third condition is the past. It's talking about alternative results. It's not just the past. It also can be now, but um, we usually use it in the past. In fact, we can use the if clause first, but it must have a comma between the if clause and the result clause or the main clause. There must be a comma. We usually start it with when or if and then we have a comma. However, we can also switch that around and have no comma. But now the if clause is last and the result clause is first. There's no comma in between. Things get wet if it rains. Things get wet when it rains. Things don't get wet when it doesn't rain. Things won't, don't get wet if it doesn't rain. You'll get wet if it rains. You won't get wet if it doesn't rain. You'd get wet if it rained. You wouldn't get wet if it didn't rain. You wouldn't have got wet if it had rained. You, you wouldn't have got wet if it hadn't rained. There's no comma here. We can say, you won't get wet when it doesn't rain. You'll get wet when it rains. And when we make questions, we need to use the main clause making questions. Questions are created with the main clause. Do things get wet if it rains? That's a yes, no question. We have a yes, no questions and we have WH questions. What happens when it doesn't rain? There's a WH question. The yes, no questions usually have the same subject. So simple present is do. Future will is will. Uh, would and would you have yes, no questions. Will you get wet if it rains? Will you get wet when it rains? Would you get wet if it rained? Would you have got wet if it had rained? WH questions, what happens when it doesn't rain? What won't get wet when it doesn't rain? What gets wet when it rains? Why wouldn't you get wet if it rained? Why wouldn't you have got wet if it had rained? So the WH questions are very, uh, very simple. Just when answering the question, don't repeat the if clause. Do things get wet if it rains? They do. Don't say, do things get wet if it rains? They do get wet if it rains. Down bushing. So, <clears throat> don't repeat the if clause when you answer the questions. Will you get wet if it rains? Let's take a look at our answers. Our answers are here. Do things get wet if it rains? They do, they don't. 
Will you get wet if it rains? I won't. I will. Would you get wet if it rained? Would you get wet if it rained? I wouldn't. And then we can ask W a question. Why? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you get wet if it rained? Because I have my umbrella is the answer. Yesterday, would you have got wet if it had rained? I wouldn't have. Why wouldn't you have got wet if it had rained? Because I had my umbrella. That's okay. We also say, because I had had my umbrella. We also say, because I'd had my umbrella. This is the best answer. The third condition is the past. It's impossible to change it. But, uh, as you can see, we have many situations where we say, I would have blah, blah, blah. I would have told Mary if I'd seen her. Let's change it from the if clause in the second. Let's change it to the first. If I'd seen Mary, I would have told her. Okay, the truth is, he, I hadn't seen Mary. I haven't seen Mary. I didn't see Mary. And I didn't tell her. So, however, if uh, I had seen her, I would have. I would have. This is analyzing alternative outcomes for the speaker. The third conditional is like a dream, but n with no possibility of the dream ever coming true. Here's an example. I bought a lottery ticket last week, but I didn't win the lottery. Okay, now if I had won, I would have bought a car. Did I win? No. Did I buy a car? No. I can also talk about regrets. Okay, I left my bike outside. It was stolen. I left my bike outside and it was stolen. This is something I regret. So I can say, I, if, you hadn't, if I hadn't left it outside, it wouldn't have been stolen. Maybe my mother can say, if you hadn't left it outside, it wouldn't have been stolen. Oh, it wouldn't have, sorry. If I hadn't left, if you hadn't left your, well, Mama Kaisho, if you hadn't left it outside, it wouldn't have been stolen. Do you remember Elaine from Seinfeld's Soup Nazi? She talked to the, the uh, <clears throat> she talked to the Soup Nazi and he got angry and told her to, to not come back. And so she hated him. But then Kramer gave her an armoir that belonged to the soup Nazi when her other one was stolen. So she wanted to thank the soup Nazi and say, you don't know how much I appreciate this. But the soup Nazi said, What was the way to say that in the third condition? How about if I'd known it was for you, I never would have given it to him in the first place. Okay? If I'd known it was for you, I wouldn't have given it to him in the first place. I would have taken a hatchet and smashed it into a million pieces. He says, if I'd known it was for you, I wouldn't have given it to him. Let's talk about mixed conditions. You have the conditions that can be mixed. The third condition, if clause, along with the second condition result clause. And we can mix this together into one sentence. We can say, if it had rained yesterday, you'd be wet right now. Okay, if it had rained yesterday, you'd be wet right now. Or you'd be wet right now. Uh, here's another example of the opposite. This time now we have this, this is, seems impossible, but it's not impossible. If you didn't live across the hall, you couldn't have met Sheldon. Okay. If you didn't now, but also in the past. So you lived here for a long time, up to now. Up to now, if you didn't live across the hall, you couldn't have met Sheldon. There's another example. If it weren't for him, you wouldn't have met Stan Lee. Okay, you wouldn't have blah, blah, blah. So when we look at this, we say, what is this? This is the past? No, it's right now. But, because we include now with the past, if it weren't for now and the past, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. It's over. So, let's uh, get ready for a quiz. Thank you.